Well, the first word of advice I would give to uh, anyone in career choice is to follow your heart. I, I see so many people over the course of my 30 years in higher education who come to a field like mine, which is archaeology, uh, at 40 and 45 years old. They're successful, but they're accountants. They're, they're businessmen and women. And what they really wanted to do was archaeology. What they've really done is lost 20 years. And so my advice to anyone is to pick a career field that you think you just love. Mine was archaeology. I never deviated from it. I, uh, my parents didn't worry about it. I knew that I might starve to death, but I was going to do my very best not to. But mostly what I couldn't live with is what if I didn't try? I didn't know whether I could be an archaeologist or not, but I knew I sure couldn't be if I didn't try. Uh, the next thing is to be patient, um, to work towards your goal and focus on it and never take no for an answer. Um, uh, the not giving up is very important. Uh, there are always going to be times in your life, in any career, in any job, when you just feel like quitting. Well, quitting is easy. Uh, it takes no brains to quit. It takes no courage to quit. But it takes a lot of courage and brains to finish the course, finish the program, finish your initial step on the ladder. So that's what I would say is follow your dream and be persistent. Don't let anybody get in your way. They might, if they do, go around them. That's what I'd say. College is a wonderful place. I probably had some of my best times uh, in college. I learned how to be independent. I learned how to think for myself when my parents weren't around. Sometimes those choices weren't so good, but and sometimes they were. But I learned how to make the right decisions. I got my PhD when I was 27, and I was very proud of that. And trust me, I had to be on the ball. But one of the things that uh, college didn't teach me, uh, especially at the undergraduate level, is how uh, is, is patience and also uh, that the world is not as structured as, as college is. You take a course, you know what the course is, you take a program, you take all your courses, and you get your degree, and then what? Well, then what? You kind of have to make it up. You kind of have to impose structure on your life. You have to be much more disciplined on your own as opposed to someone else telling you what you need to do. And so it is, um, a college is very structured and life is not. So what you have to learn how to do and what they don't teach you in college is how to deal with the real world in a real practical way. So what I say is you have to be patient. You have to keep yourself organized and keep yourself on track because nobody's going to do it for you. And I, I think that uh, the knowledge that you gain and the education you gain in college is fine. But what's out there is how to apply it and how to deal with the real unstructured crazy chaos we call the world. Well, there are two, two answers I have to what, is there anything I would do differently as I prepared for my career? In the world of archaeology, which is my academic career, my professional career, the answer is no. I went to the right schools at the right time, at the right place. I made great decisions. Uh, I was on track. I didn't lollygag in uh, graduate school. Uh, I, 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 I got the courses in. I picked my schools very strategically got out, got a good job, and I was prepared to do any kind of archaeology. It was, it was perfect training. But now I'm president of a university. I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would be uh, a president of a university with 11,700 students, a $90 million budget, a board of trustees, which are very, you know, it's, it's, it's weird working for 13 people. And uh, so, so I have called, I'm, I'm amazed at how my career in anthropology and archaeology as a researcher, a teacher, and an administrator, how that has prepared me to be president. Uh, I really am a leader. Uh, I have lots of juice. I, I, I am not afraid to step up. I'm also a team player. I know I'm only the captain, and sometimes the captain makes the wrong decisions. Sometimes the captain drops the ball, and I've got to have uh, vice presidents now who pick up the ball, who also go to bat for me and to protect me from, uh, from uh, making uh, mistakes. Um, 
I am really surprised at how much archaeology has and my development of a program from nothing. I came here to the University of West Florida as a walk-on. There was no job, there was no program, there wasn't a shovel, there wasn't a trowel, there wasn't anything. Archaeology was non-existent. And that's the way I wanted it. I wanted a blank slate, a clean slate, so I could build a program the way I thought it should be uh, operated with the values of teamwork, the values of helping each other, and putting students first. I didn't like what they were doing. I still don't like the culture at Research One institutions. Um, they have a great contribution. They do great things. But as far as Judy Benz fitting in with that, it's not a good fit. And so I came to a place where, by gosh, I'm going to build it on my own or I'm not going to do it. And it worked. Uh, so starting from scratch, needing partners all the time, never having enough money, having to convince people to come to the University of West Florida, which they'd never heard of before, uh, to, to an archaeology program that they, they never heard of. Uh, I had to get buy-in from people. I had, to get, I had to be the junior partner to people. And coming up that way, then being a, a, an equal partner, then being a senior partner, then having a successful national program where people would come to it and beat down my door to join our team because we had the kind of program they liked also. Uh, that's, that's, that's a whole process. And when you go through that process, it took 28 years, uh, when you go through that, uh, you really know the ropes. And so what I've taken is from, from that is I learned how to be a leader because the alternative was always failing. And I, uh, I hate to fail. We all do. I also learned that failure is kind of uh, on your own definition. People have told me no many, many, many times. And what that means, and I turn that answer of no when I wanted something to no for now. No for that way, no for that plan, no for that, that way of doing it. And I kept coming back and saying, well, how about if we do it this way? And how about if we do it that way? And what's the matter with us? Why, well, we should be out there doing this. And, and all of that is translated into when there was a, a, a vacancy at the presidency of this university. They wanted somebody like me because they knew me. I didn't make any enemies along the way. I don't believe in making enemies. Enemies can only hurt you. They can never help you. Even when I have people who don't like me or don't like what I'm doing, I don't fight with them. I say, okay, no for now. Uh, I don't try to, and then when I began to be successful, uh, I didn't step on them. I didn't take things from people who were weaker than me when I could take positions or could take money. When I did get positions and money, sometimes I shared them. I know how hard they are to get. I know how hard money is to get when you're down in the ranks and give them back a little bit. So that kind of philosophy builds uh, trust. They know that I am going to be the kind of president that I was when I was the head of a, of a huge archaeological enterprise uh, at a regional comprehensive. Well, it's bigger than many flagship um, programs. But the point is, is that they trust me, and a good leader needs trust. You have to stay true to your word. When you can't hold your word, you tell your partners right away that you're having trouble, you can't do it, you have to do it a different way. That is leadership. Leadership is not telling, what people, telling people what to do. It's not using your authority to make people do it. That's the last thing you want to do. What you need as a leader, and I developed along the way, is you need people to help you. You need them to trust you. Yeah, you need them to, to, to help you along the way. Partners that are willing. That really is, is the kind of uh, values and qualities that I've learned. I didn't learn those in college. Uh, you could argue that the, the seeds of that in me were in college. I, uh, I was the captain of the teams. I was often the leader of a group. People always said I had leadership potential. Well, what does that mean when you're 20? What does that mean when you're 25? Academics really teach you how to be fiercely independent, not to depend on anyone else. But the real world, you need everyone else. And so, so uh, you could say I was very well trained for archaeology. I really know how to do it, and I'm good at it. And that really, growing this program in archaeology, has, has really prepared me to be a university president. It prepared me to be anything. There is really nothing I feel that I couldn't do if I wanted to. I'm a CEO now. And the decisions I make affect thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And uh, everyone knows that all I can do is my best. That's all I can guarantee to people. I'm going to have some bad ideas, and I'm going to have some great ones. And, uh, and so, uh, so charting that course of growth and development, athletics, all the things I think this university needs, you get people 
invigorated. I mean, the economy is in the tank, uh, but there's nothing we can do about that. What we can do is, is move forward at the University of West Florida in ways that, that help us. That's the way I approach archaeology, and it's the way I'm approaching being a CEO of a, of a university. So uh, my discipline training helped me uh, to be an archaeologist, and my uh, training and experiences as an archaeologist has helped me be um, at least a, a good CEO. My advice to high school students and uh, people preparing for a career, what do you do to make yourself more employable? I would say learn how to get along with people because this is a people world. These are people jobs. You've got to get along with people. Number two, be relevant. Figure out what other people need and how you can help them meet their needs. That's worked for me like magic all my life. It's not what I want, it's what they want, and now I can help them solve their problems. And, uh, and be patient, you know. Don't run away is the first time somebody tells you no uh, because you'll be running all your life. Uh, so uh, take a no with a grain of salt and uh, come back with a, a better idea and a different idea. So I would say uh, um, uh, learn how to get along, have a pleasant personality, uh, get, and uh, learn how to help people solve their problems, not yours, solve their problems.